Hello, I'm Atuba Judge. Now, this is a new week, and I bless God for your lives. I thank God for what he's doing. And remember, the Lord says we are in the season of restoration. Restoration of what? All the years. Praise God. Now, God is bringing you to the place of his word. So that's why, you know, last week I was sharing with you about uh, understanding prophecy. The reason is this. Everything about our lives have been written already in God's book. And that's what the book of life is. It contains uh, everything that God has planned for us. Now, if he has planned it and he has written these things down, you see, that's why in Hebrews he says, Lo, I come in the volume of the books it is written of me. That's why Jesus, when he lived his life on the earth, he would do things and people would say, oh, that they remember that it was written of him, you see, or, or that it might be fulfilled what was written or what was spoken by the prophets. See? So God, the, the reason someone can see into these things is because they already exist. Where? In God's book, in God's plan. See, that's what the book of life is. So when God is doing something in your life, he is only bringing to pass what he has already written concerning you. Now, this week we're going to be taking it a step further and talking about how do I function in fulfilling the, the things that God has spoken concerning me. Sometimes people don't know. See, they, they, they hear words of prophecy. Now, of course, there are some words of prophecy that are really not from God. I mean, there are, there are some that are really from God. Now, how do I judge? How do I know that this prophecy is from God or this prophecy is not of God? Now, first of all, remember what the scripture says as spirit that recognizes that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. It's of God. That's in 1 John. Now, he says, any spirit that does not recognize that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is the spirit of Antichrist. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean when someone is prophesying to you, the person must first say, Thus says the Lord, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. No, 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 that's not what that means. That means every statement, every word that doesn't recognize the ability of Jesus Christ on the earth and in your life, it's not of God. Now, let me take that a step further. Now, someone comes to you and is telling you, Thus says the Lord, thus says the Lord, you have done so much evil, you have done so much evil, therefore you shall die. And there is no remedy to you. Now, the moment you hear that, you just know that that's not God speaking. You know why? Because that prophecy is not recognizing that Jesus came to the earth in the flesh. Now, what did Jesus come to do? To save mankind. See? Now, if Jesus came to save mankind, then he's not going to speak to anybody in, the, in, in concluding the person's life to say that there is no remedy for this person's life. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. So, automatically, that prophecy just tells you that it's not God that is speaking. Now, that's what it means by recognizing that Jesus came in the flesh. I hope you're getting this. Now, such prophecies, you know, no, it, it doesn't matter what you have done. The Bible says he came to save that which was lost. That's what Jesus came to do. So every prophecy must recognize. Now, if someone may come to you and say, look, this is what you have done. This is what, and because of this, is this and this, that's why these things are happening to you. Okay, what next? See, and then the prophet, if you, if you will only accept Jesus, or if you will only repent from your evil ways and trust in the Lord, then the word of the Lord will be fulfilled in your life. Now, you just know that, okay, this prophet is bringing correction to me, but then there's edification at the end. Can you see that? Now, it's left for the person. If the person obeys, fine and good. You, you, you get what I'm saying. And secondly, Every prophecy requires only one thing. And what is that thing? That you believe. Now, <clears throat> and this is very important because this, this is a practice that it's going on in, 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 in certain areas. Someone comes to you and say, oh, something was buried in your father's house. 
And that thing that was buried in your father's house is what is causing everybody's failure. And until you go dig that thing out and remove that thing, nobody, you are not going to succeed. And, and you are a believer in Jesus Christ. Now, automatically, you just know that that person is not speaking by the Spirit of God. You say, ah, but really, you know, I have testimony when we went to the village and we dug some things out. Listen, listen, listen. That prophecy is not recognizing that Jesus came in the flesh. I say, how? Jesus said, behold, I give you power or authority over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurts you. Now, Jesus said that when he walked on the earth. If that is true, there is no way Jesus is going to come today and send someone to you and say, the reason you're not making progress is because somebody buried something in your village. So go and dig out that thing that has been buried in your village and then you now look for a man of God to carry to. Come on now. It's not. That's not Jesus speaking. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because such prophecies will only put you more in bondage. It doesn't bring you freedom. But the Bible says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Praise God. I've got to stop here today. But now, this is a line of conversation we're going to be having this week. And then we'll go into some other things. Now, remember, this Saturday and Sunday, our program Sound the Alarm is holding in the city of Abuja. The information is on your screen. Don't miss it. Begin to plan for it. And, and, and God bless you. Have a wonderful day today. Bye-bye.